Okay. Welcome to Learn to Crochet the Alpine Stitch in three different colors. Dana will be teaching our class today. My name is Jenny and we are here from Favecrafts Studio. So Favecrafts is a website that shares all different crafting tutorials from all over the internet. We have a variety of free email newsletters broken down by interests such as Easy Does Knit, which is a knitting newsletter, Everyday Crochet, Trash to Treasure, etc. You can sign up for any of our free email newsletters uh, every day at, fa at favecrafts.com. I'll put the link to sign up in the chat. Um, and then <clears throat> we are recording today's class, like I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, if you have any questions as we go, feel free to use the Q&A. Uh, the chat moves really quickly. So if you have a specific question, um, please use the Q&A and we will do our best to answer it in real time. If not, um, we can try to answer questions at the end. Uh, the recording will be really helpful for you if you have questions. And you know, we're we can take breaks and you know go slow, but we we want to keep. It's only an hour, and uh, we have a lot to cover. So I want to kind of keep the pace going. We won't be able to you know go back a whole lot, but the recording will allow you to pause and rewind as many times as you want. Um, so we do have the pattern as well. Uh, I think Dana is putting it in the chat. Um, this is an original pattern from Dana. Uh, her blog, DanaNeal.com. So this is, uh, she just put the link to the pattern in the chat. So make sure you have the pattern ready to go. Um, and we do have a quick offer from our sponsor today uh, from our friends at ilikecrochet.com. It's a digital magazine. New subscribers, uh, if you want, if you're not already a subscriber of this, you can get a one-year subscription for just $5. So normally it's $59 for a one-year subscription. So this is 90% off the retail price. Uh, you can gift it as well. If you are already a member and you love it, you can gift it to a friend. Um, I, you know, it's Christmas in July, so maybe you can get this as a gift right now in advance of the holidays. Um, so yeah, the link here, I like crochet.com slash virtual 24 publishes six times a year. It's completely ad free. So um, there's no ads as you're working on the patterns. All the patterns have been tech edited, which is really nice as well. Um, and you get access to all the back issues. So tons of pattern inspiration uh, with your one year subscription. Um, okay. So now I'm going to introduce Dana. She is the editor of favecrafts.com. She's been crocheting for more than 10 years, and she loves making baby blankets for friends and family. She loves patterns that feature an easy-to-memorize repeat so she can work them up while hanging out with family, listening to a podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Her personal blog is dananeeld.com, so please be sure to check that out. Um, and I think I'm going to turn it over to Dana, and uh, I will be here answering questions as we go. I'm going to turn my camera off. Um, like I said, it's an hour long class. So, and we will be emailing the recording 24 hours from today. So, um, this time tomorrow, you should get a link to the recording in your inbox. So if you have to leave early, or if you're joining us late, no worries. Um, or if, you know, maybe you're watching this recording and you couldn't make the live at all, which is totally fine. So, um, again, I'm going to stop talking, hand it over to Dana and enjoy. Thank you, Jenny. Um, welcome everybody and welcome to everybody from, you know, beginner to intermediate crocheters. I think you're going to really enjoy the stitch today if you, um, if you're a more intermediate crocheter and for the beginners, just try not to be discouraged. There's a lot we're going to go over, but these skills all build on each other. We're going to be doing single crochet stitches, double crochets, and then front post triple crochets. So that's the most advanced of the stitches. But once you get going, once you've practiced, it's it's such a fun stitch. It's got really great texture. So this is the swatch. And you can see there's these, the post stitches like reach down. So you get this kind of blended effect as you go up. And this great texture, it's hard to tell on a smaller swatch, but it's surprisingly drapey for, thickness of the texture working with post stitches. So, um, all right. So for this class today, if uh, if, if you're tuning in on, on YouTube or um, you're watching this in the future, all you need is three colors of worsted weight yarn and an I-9 crochet hook. And then stitch markers are optional. I think they're really helpful for beginners not just beginners, I mean, I use them all the time too, but they, depending on the stitch pattern you're doing, 
They're super helpful to mark the beginning and end of each row, the first stitch and the last stitch of each row. So you don't accidentally drop a stitch, um, especially if it's a project you're, you're gonna pick up and put down over the course of you know, a, a long period of time, right? Where you might not quite remember where you'd left off. <clears throat> Very sorry, my voice is a little raspy. I was just telling Jenny, I've been uh, battling a cold for like 10 days now. So hopefully uh, it's not too distracting. So we're gonna go ahead and grab your color A. So I'm gonna just start with this teal color and make a slip knot. And since we have a, a total beginner, I, at least one total beginner in the class, the way I like to make a slip knot is I just loop the yarn a couple times, pinch one of the ends and pull it through. We'll do that again. Loop the yarn, pinch an end, pull it through. <laughs> All right. For this swatch today, we are gonna chain 12. So all you do to chain, yarn over, grab that loop, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Get 12 chains. Excuse me, for the for beginners, the loop on your hook never counts as a stitch. So just to, to double count what we did here and um, start, you know, count up to this one, not the loop on your hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, row one, we're gonna single crochet. <clears throat> We're going to double crochet across and we're going to start in the third chain from the hook. So count one, two, three. And I like to work into the back bump because it makes a cleaner edge, especially if you're going to put a border on your project. I mostly make baby blankets, so I almost always am putting a border on my work. So I, that's why I like to work in the back bump. So you have the options here to work one, two, three. You could work right into this, the top of this V. Or if you flip it over, bumps on the back. So this is the first bump, second bump, third bump. To double crochet, yarn over before you insert your hook. Insert your hook in that third stitch. Yarn over, pull up a Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. <clears throat> In this pattern, this these first two chains here are going to count as a stitch. So we'll keep that in mind when we do our final count here at the end. And then you're just going to double crochet across. So again, yarn over. Insert your hook in that back bump. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All right, continue across. We get to the end, <clears throat> we're going to have, we should have 10 double crochets, including that chain two at the start of the swatch.
very last stitch here. It's a little tricky because it's so close to the knot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We do have a quick question from Catherine. She's wondering, can you do foundation double crochet rather than chain then double crochet across? Yes, yes, you can, totally. I apologize. I think there was a typo in my instructions because I have one extra stitch. So bear with me. We're going to still just work with whatever you do get 10 double crochets. And then instead of working into that turning chain, we now we don't need to. Followed the exact instructions I wrote down. I'm not sure what happened there. Anyway, go ahead, chain one and turn. And now we're gonna begin row two. And this we're just single crocheting across. So we have some really basic setup rows here. We've got one row of double crochet and then a row a single crochet. For any beginners, single crochet is easier than double crochet. You don't have to yarn over first. You just insert your hook in the first stitch and you're going under both of those Vs. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through both. Your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. When we get to the end here, we're going to just work into the top of this last double crochet. And again, you should end up with 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, this is a, a taller row, but I like to just chain one whenever possible. So I like to chain one ahead of double crochet rows. That's not very conventional. Usually you chain two if it doesn't count as a stitch and you chain three if it does count as a stitch. Um, I like to just chain one because then I'm never questioning, do I work into this stitch or not? Um, because it, it it's so hard, it's, it's hard to see that chain one. Um, so that's a personal preference. If you want to chain two ahead of our taller rows, feel free. So this is one of the taller rows. Now this is where the stitch, the alpine stitch begins. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. So we're gonna double crochet in the first stitch. We're going to begin the front post treble crochets. So in order to do our front post treble crochets, we are working two rows down to get that great kind of blended looking effect from the swatch. So when you work this far down, So what you're gonna do, so for treble crochets, <clears throat> again, for our beginners, so single crochets, you just insert your hook, you don't yarn over first. Double crochets, you yarn over one time and then insert the hook. For trebles, you yarn over twice. So wrap the hook one time and then wrap it again. 
and to do post stitches, you know, typically you're working right into this next stitch. But to do a post stitch, we're isolating the whole, the, the stitch height, the bar that makes up the stitch. And since we're working two rows down, we're isolating a double crochet from row one. If you were just working into the post of the next row, we would just, we would be working around this single crochet here. So we've yarned over twice. We're doing a front post treble crochet, which means we're bringing the stitch towards the front, towards us, forward. To do that, you're gonna insert your hook behind it, like that. Again, pulling it towards you. Gotta pull up a loop, pull it through. So now we've got four loops on our hook. And, and like with other stitches, like with the, in general with stitches, there's exceptions to every rule, but you're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until your stitch is complete. So we yarned over, pull through the first two stitches, yarn over, pull through the next two stitches, yarn over, pull through the last two stitches. And there is our nice, chunky, textural front post treble crochet to get our pattern started. Now, whenever you work post stitches, since you're working in front of the row, there's an extra stitch back here that we didn't work into. So you want to skip that so we don't increase accidentally. And so we're going to work just a double crochet into the next stitch. Yarn over. And if you have to, a lot of times when I'm working any kind of pattern with post stitches, I'm doing a lot of this. Double checking. I don't actually work into this stitch that I, I had worked a post stitch in front of. Um, I find that a little easier than, than not checking. And then I get to the end of the row and I'm like, ah, how do I have 15 stitches now? We're supposed to have 10. And so there's that. So Got a double crochet, front post treble, double crochet. And we're going to keep repeating, alternating front post treble and regular double crochet to the end of the row. Well, until we have two stitches left. So yarn over twice for the front post treble crochet. We already worked the double crochet here. So we're going to go, we're, we're skipping this post and we're working into this post. So insert that hook, bring that post forward, yarn over, pull up a loop. You got four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's another Nice, chunky, textural stitch. Double crochet in the next stitch. Make sure you do not work into the V of the stitch where we just worked a post stitch. Yarn over two, yarn over two. Front post treble. So yarn over twice. Bring that post forward. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, next stitch. Front post treble crochet into the stitch. Okay, now we've got two stitches left in the row. We're not gonna ever do post stitches into the edges. Um, our edges 
are always going to be framed. There's always going to be just a regular double crochet in these right side facing rows. And so since we've got two stitches left, we're just going to double crochet in the last two. I'm going to stop right here because we are going to join color B now. So this stitch pattern, you're changing colors every three rows. And we've just worked our row three, and so it's time to bring in a new color. And the best way to do that is you have those final two loops left on your hook. Instead of finishing the stitch as you normally would, bring in your new color. Just lay it across like that. I have the tail in front of me here. And then the rest of the yarn is attached to the skein. You just hold on to it and bring it through. Now, some, some folks just leave it at that and go through, go from there, because you're going to tack down the colors as you crochet. Um, I like it to be a little more secure. So what I do, I'll tug this stitch tight. So this is the tail that we just, of the color we just dropped. And then I'm going to do a an, an chain one and snug that up too. So just tighten those up real good. We're all set, ready to continue with color B. Now that chain one I just did to attach the color, that's not the same as the chain one we do at the end of the row to then turn. So I'm still going to chain one and then turn. Does anybody have questions about joining a color before I continue? Or questions about anything? All right, so this is a wrong side row. On all wrong side rows, we're just gonna single crochet across. And so the Alpine stitch, it's a four row repeat, but two of the rows are just single crocheting across. So you can get back to working the like the, the post stitches on the front of your work. It's literally, you're just traveling to get back to where you were. And so, especially for any beginners or for folks for folks who really love mindless crochet patterns and then you see a four row repeat you're like forget it that's going to be too hard to memorize take a look at the instructions and see you know it might be easier than you think there's a lot of four row repeat patterns where two of the rows are just single crochet across or half double crochet across something like that which we makes them Oh, go ahead, Jenny. I was going to say, we do have a question from Victoria. She's wondering, do you cut the first color after starting the new color? No. Good question, Victoria. Also, hi, it's good to see you. I love seeing familiar names in the classes. Um, we're not cutting any colors today because we are going to work the pattern, carrying the colors up the sides so we have fewer ends to weave in. So leave it attached. And it's going to be a little more maintenance, right, with these tails floating around but it makes it so much easier at the end of your projects when you don't have to weave in all those ends. Good question. Okay, so let's go ahead and single crochet across with our color B. We will do some more alpine stitches. Okay, I'm going to double count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, all good. Then chain one and turn. If you prefer to chain two on these taller right side facing rows, feel free. Okay, now. In order to get to, to offset these post stitches, 
we now need to start this row with two double crochets so that we can work in between these posts to get that beautiful alpine stitch texture. So go ahead and double crochet in the first two stitches. Angie has a question um, about how many, I think that's front post, should she have? FPTC should I have so far from Angie? Yes, great question. There are four. So you've got double crochet, front post treble, double front post treble, double front post treble, double front post treble, and then two doubles. So you should have six regular doubles in that row and four front post trebles. Good question. We have those first two double crochets done. Now, to do our next front post treble crochet, we're isolating this double crochet from two rows back. So again, we're not working into any, like we're not working post stitches around any single crochets. That would mean I would work right here. To get that pretty like woven look, we're working two rows down. So yarn over twice. Insert your hook, pushing that post towards you. Yarn over, pull through. Two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we're starting to see a little bit of that, that nice overlap between the stitches. Okay, double crochet in the next stitch right here. That V where we'd worked a post in front of that stitch. And then front post treble down here. Double crochet in the next stitch. Front post treble. Double crochet towards it. Crochet here, the next stitch. And here in the previous row, we'd worked the two double crochets here. So we're gonna be pulling this one towards us. Yarn over twice. Front post treble. And now we've got one double crochet left in the round to do. Those two. And then here, since we are carrying colors up the sides, I like to tack down my color as I go. Um, you don't have to. You could wait and do that, you know, in the next couple rounds. But you don't want to just leave this hanging. This is the yarn that's still attached to the skein because eventually you're going to have this really tall float and they can get tight. And then you might have some bunching up in your completed project. So for me, I just like tacking them down at the end of every row. So what that looks like here, I'm just grabbing both of them, both my working yarn and this yarn to tack down. Pull yarn over with both of them, pull through. Next round, just chain one and turn with your current working color. So there's your float. And you can, if you pulled it too tight when you did the yarn over, you can loosen it up a bit. 
If it's too loose, like what I just did, you can tighten it up a bit. You've got some wiggle room there since we're not working with this yarn yet. This is a good spot to, um, to, to do that. Okay, so we are going to take a little intermission here. Um, let me get back over to my slides. Wonderful class, Dana. Thank you so much. We are just um, going to take a quick little pause here and talk about some upcoming classes. Uh, let me do a screen share again. There we go. Okay, so we have 3D uh, fabric flowers coming up on July 23rd, so in just a couple weeks. Um, this is a new class, a free class, uh, same time and place, 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you can't make this time, feel free to still sign up and you will get a recording uh, in the next day. Um, so that is a great way to expand your skills. I believe this is a sewing class. So if you want to, you know, explore a new niche, uh, we can learn how to make some pretty flowers. And then we also have some knitting classes coming up this fall. So this is in August. We have an intro to steaking class where you'll make a beautiful headband. And then following that, uh, we're doing a knit along, uh, falling into autumn with a uh, cardigan knit along in August, 2024. So we can, uh, we'll put the links to sign up. You'll, if you go to our Eventbrite page, um, you can sign up for those classes. And um, I think that's it. Yeah, just one more time, the offer for I Like Knitting, I Like Crochet, and We Like Sewing. These are just a few of our digital magazines that we have for just $5. Um, so in addition to the crochet one I talked about earlier, we also have the same deal for the knitting magazine that we publish as well, or our friends at I Like Knitting publish. Um, it's all part of the Prime Publishing umbrella, but uh, this is our premium content digital magazine. So we have I Like Knitting, I Like Crochet, and We Like Sewing. So for just $5, you can get a subscription to any one of those. Um, and I posted the link already for the I Like Crochet magazine offer in the chat. I will post these as well in the chat as well if you want to subscribe to the knitting one or the uh, sewing one. Um, I think that's it. So I will go back to Dana. Jenny, um, and just a note about the knitting classes, they're not available yet to sign up for, but they will be soon. Uh, and the first one in that series is, is gonna be free, the headband, but the sweater knit along is going to be a paid class series. And it's, um, if you've been with us for a long time, we used to do paid classes, like paid class series uh, years ago, and we're, we're giving it a whirl again. Um, and so it's a more intimate setting. It's more like a Zoom meeting where you can turn on your camera and your audio if you want and get like personalized help from the instructor. And if any of you have attended our classes with Molly Conroy in the past, she's going to be the one teaching that whole series. So she's from the Hands-On Knitting Center, if that sounds familiar. Okay, um, enough uh, uh, promos, but um, let's get back to it. So, all right, we have completed two rows of the um, color B so far. So then we're going to move on to the color, or to row three of color B before we attach color C. So I'd already chained one here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn, single crochet across. This is the back of the work. It's It ends up looking kind of like pretty and lacy, which is nice. It's nice when the back of a project also kind of looks cool, even if it's not as cool looking as the front. Stitches. I'll just, once again, double count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fabulous. Okay. Chain one and turn. And now this is going, this is, we're back at row three of the repeat. 
So you're just gonna double crochet in the first stitch. And then front post treble in the next stitch. So here, that's this guy, right? Always the double crochet beneath the next stitch. Yarn over twice. Pull up that loop and yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Double crochet in the next stitch. And now you, you'll always know which row of the repeat you're on because each right side facing row either starts with two double crochets or ends with two double crochets. You always have the one double crochet at the end. And then as you work across, you're like, oh, I don't have room for another treble crochet. Well, then you know that's the row where you're ending with the two double crochets. So you shouldn't have to, you know, once you get going, you shouldn't have to consult the written pattern very much because you're going to have these hints available to you as you work. You'll be able to see, like, for example, say you get near the end of the row and you work three regular double crochets. Well, that's not right because the pattern, it either calls for two double crochets at the start of the row or two double crochets at the end. You should never work three in a row. So then, you know, oh, I'm, I have one more front post treble crochet that, you know, I missed. Something like that. Um, another hint so you know exactly what you're working on is at this point, what it what it kind of looks like you're always working either into the single crochets or two rows down in the, for the post stitches but it almost looks like you're working a double crochet on top of this ridge then there's another row in between so you should you know keep that in mind too as you work you're always working the double crochets sort of directly on top of the post stitches from two rows back so you're offsetting them and you're always working your post stitches, you know, kind of in between the post stitches from the previous row. And this row ends with two regular double crochets. Just realized I did an extra row without joining the new color. So there's another hint. You'll know you shouldn't have all your floats on the same side. Part of why you work an odd number is because then you get some floats on this side, some floats on that side, and then you'll be able to see exactly where you attach. You know, either you're carrying up a color or you're changing color. So. We're gonna pull that back. Back to the single crochet row, because we did a single crochet row and then a post stitch, a right side row, and then a single crochet row. So if you're behind, maybe that was an opportunity to catch up. If you did that row, it was more practice. Um, so go ahead, you start your single crochet, for that last stitch of that row. And we're gonna join color C now. And again, to join your new color, instead of finishing the stitch with your working color, lay your new color over with the tail facing you, pinch it together, and pull through. Then snug up that stitch using your color B, the color you just dropped. Chain one with your new color, color C. 
and snug that up again and you'll pull on the tail to do that and look at how nice and neat that color change looks all right chain one and turn All right, <clears throat> excuse me, back to this row. So double crochet in the first stitch, front post treble crochet, and we know we're gonna front post double crochet in the next stitch because we've got these two kind of flat stitches here. So we gotta make that textural. So let's pull that second one towards us. double crochet in the next stitch, which kind of looks like it's right on top of this post stitch from a few rows back. Front post treble crochet. Double crochet. Right. right along. All right, and then we're going to just double crochet in the last two stitches. So we're we're kind of double crocheting again. What looks like on top of those front post treble crochets. And then, oh, one stitch left. I know I'm double crocheting in the first and last stitch of every row, of every right side facing row. All right, so we're starting to see, I'm gonna hold this even closer. We're starting to see these pretty color changes. It's so nice how these stitches, the Alpine stitch like drops down so it overlaps a bit more. And you get that nice effect. Now, let's go back because we're tacking down colors or changing colors at the end of each row. So, long floats from forming, we're going to yarn over with both our working yarn and the yarn that's for lack of a better word, available to tack down. It's this over here, this is a tail. We don't need to tack down any tails. And pull through to complete the stitch. One and turn with your working yarn. So there's some yarn maintenance because as you work, these yarns are all gonna, you know, they're start, gonna start to overlap each other because you're turning your work, you're turning your work. And then you got these, <clears throat> the yarn still attached to the skeins to, to deal with. So, you know, up to you, you can untangle them, you know, as you go, but I found you can actually work several rows without them tangling too badly. Like often I'll have all my yarn in a project bag and I'll like do several rows of a, of a project like this. And then, uh, you know, they're fine in the project bag. And then eventually I'll go in and, um, kind of untaint. They don't even really get tainted. So then I'll go in and fix that occasionally. So there's there's a little more maintenance you do when you're carrying colors up the sides as you work. But to me, that's worth it to not have a bazillion tails to wait, weave in at the end of the project. I think it makes color work projects less daunting. Okay, so that we've done two rows in this color so far. Once again, we're tacking down whatever color at the end of this row that's that's available to tack down to prevent long floats from forming. So just yarn over with both your colors, pull through.
one with your working colors. Okay. I've done, this is row three. So at the end of this row, we're going to be changing colors. So we're double crochet in the first stitch, always a double crochet in the first. Got a treble right here. We're going to double crochet again in the next stitch. Our trebles, our textural stitches, yarn over twice. Here's the next post we're isolating. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Next stitch, front post treble in the next stitch. So if you see any alpine stitch patterns out in the wild, and they call for front post double crochets. That is another way of doing it. But as you can see, I tend to crochet tightly. And so the, even this little edge here is curling a bit already. Um, and so if you are like me and you tend to crochet tightly, then the treble crochet option is really nice because you're less likely to have your work curl severely. Um, sometimes, you'll see the advice to just crochet more loosely, but I think that's that's very overwhelming to me because I don't know what loose means. You know, lo there's loose and there's loose and there's loose. Instead, you know, I like, I want to try to crochet to the tightness of my hook. And so anyway, front post treble crochet is a nice option. Even if you see a pattern and it's written with front post double crochets, but you want to try it, just try the, treble crochet and see, you know, you could do a little swatch or, or just try the pattern, do a few rows of the pattern with the front post treble crochet, see how it goes. Um, Cause then, yeah, it might, it might work out nicely. It, again, if you crochet tightly. All right, here we are at the last stitch of the round. We've done three rows in this color. So we're going to be switching color now. So we're going to start our double crochet and now we're going back to color A, which should be your available color to work on. So you shouldn't have to be like, oh, what color do I pick next? Because this is the only option available because your color B, that tail is hanging out over here or that, that working yarn is hanging out over here. So to switch to your next color, Easy peasy, just do most of the stitch until you have two loops left and yarn over with your next color. Pull through. Away we go, chain one and turn. We do have a question from Felicia. She's wondering what is the difference between doing an alpine stitch and the front post pattern? That is a good, good question. So. Front post treble crochet is, is the stitch itself, right? Alpine stitch is just this arrangement of the stitches. So like I could do front post treble crochets and just make like straight up and down bars without them being offset like this. And that would be a different stitch than the alpine stitch. Or you could do front post double crochet sorry, front post treble crochet and make cables. Or you could do front post treble crochet two together and make like an arrow stitch. And so you've got a lot you can do with the front post double crochet, front post treble, excuse me, front post treble crochets. But this arrangement where they're offset like this, that's the alpine stitch. Good question. All right, here we are almost about to complete the last stitch of this row. We're gonna tack down this color. So grab them both and pull through. Then just chain one with your working color. Double crochet in the first stitch because we always double crochet in the first stitch on the right side. And here, 
there's no textural stitch right here. So we know the next one's gonna be a front post treble. And next stitch. And we'll continue along. Take this technique where you're carrying the colors of the sides. Another option, instead of changing colors every three rows, you could change color every single row if you wanted to, if you liked that look. And so you would never, you would never need to tack anything down. You would just always, whatever color was available, if you're doing three colors, whatever color was available, it, you would switch to it. that down so we're going to use both colors to do that. Act it down, chained one, and now we're about to do row three of the color. So at the end of this row we'll grab our next color and single crochet across. So this technique to work you need an odd number of colors or at least an odd number of skeins because otherwise you you could technically do this with an even number but then all your floats are going to be on one side of your work um which could be okay if you're enclosing them in a, i mean you have i won't say you have to you are most likely going to enclose them in a border because this just looks a little bit funky um and so if you have all those floats on one side and not the other, the only concern I would have is bulk. Um, if you have like a bulkier edge on this side than the other. But I've never actually like done a pattern where all the floats were on one side. And so maybe it wouldn't be a big deal and it's not much to worry about. But it does seem to be the convention to do an odd number of colors. So on each side. Okay, we did three rows with this color, so it's time to switch. And this one, this color is available. So that's what we're switching to. Okay, a chain one. So by now we've got we've gotten going with tacking down floats and switching colors. And so from here on out, you're just gonna do the three rows and then switch colors. So this is a four row repeat pattern, but we're changing rows every three colors. So it can be a tiny bit confusing for that reason. Um, I think the effect is really pretty because then you've got what looks like, like shorter rows of one color and then longer rows and they alternate and then you get this pretty effect of like thicker and thinner stripes. Um, I, th I think it is lovely, but for that reason, it's just a pinch more intermediate. There's a little bit more to remember, but I really think it is a mindless pattern once you get going, once you have your floats tacked down and um, you, you know like, okay, I'm not picking this color up this round, I'm picking it up the next round. Or, um, what have you, or, oh, I'm not picking up this color. Like, I'm not gonna pick up this color because I just did this color. My next color is this one. Um, so a couple little notes. We've got a couple minutes left um, and I see a question. So I see a couple of questions. So just one, one note is you are gonna want to put a border on this to enclose those floats. So, um, I have a random skein of yarn somewhere, just like a real quick 
no. So just as you're working, let's just say I'm starting my border here. You want to make sure working along the sides. Oops, sorry, I was not on the screen at all there. You're tacking down or you're enclosing all those floats as you do a border. I really recommend starting with just a single crochet border and then doing, you know, whatever border pattern you like. But make sure as you work along the sides, you're working both into stitches, so like these blue stitches on the side, but you're also tacking down your floats as you go. And then you are able to see just the teensiest bit of that color peeking through, even when you're crocheting a border over it. I think that's just fine. Um, it's just the teensiest little bit. You really got to look for it. But, you know, if you don't like that, then maybe you don't want to col carry colors up the sides. You know, that's it's totally up to you. It's what you like. It's your preference. Um, but I hope I've convinced you that it's like not bad and it's worth it to not have. I mean, we'd already have so many ends to weave in. We'd have what, like eight, eight ends to weave in. And right now we just have three. So, um, okay, a couple of questions. Victoria is asking, would you be able to use more than three colors? Yes, I have done, um, I have a baby blanket pattern coming out in August that alternates five colors. So every row is a different color and you're tacking down colors and or changing colors as you go. Um, I think the effect is so cool. I love all the stripes. I'm really excited about that pattern. Um, so but you can you can use any odd number. It's just going to be more maintenance, right? You're gonna have five skeins of yarn kind of tangling in or you know uh, overlapping each other as you work that you're gonna have to periodically untangle. Um, or, you know, your or seven skeins of yarn, you'd have to periodically untangle. So it's just, it's like, it's more work in that way, but the effect is so beautiful that, you know, it's, I think it's worth trying. So good question. Um, and then Ida's asking, how do you avoid tangling the three colors? You don't, they do get tangled. So you can, well, let me pull out this border color right here. See if I could show you a little bit more what's going on on my desk <clears throat> now that Yeah, this is like, look at all this yarn that's like tangled. Um, it looks like a mess, right? But it's really not bad. Like it's not gonna take that long to go through, you know, wind up your ball and follow the strand and isolate that skein. So I'm realizing what time it is. So um, you can either, untangle it as you go and just you know each at the end of each row just kind of move your skeins of yarn around or you can let them get a little tangled and then periodically untangle them before you continue and then let's see i'm just saying what about using a yarn drum i have a project bag with places for several yarns and grommets for each yarn strand maybe that would avoid tangles that's a good question. I They wouldn't get tangled, but you'd still have all these strands overlapping each other. So I feel like you would have to take the yarn out, again, periodically, not necessarily at the end of every row. But you'd still have to take the yarn out and move it around the other strands of working yarn to then separate those strands. Um, but that could be a good option for like several rows. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's not as bad to untangle as you think. And I've untangled a lot of yarn. Um, okay, yay, I'll just leave that there. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm realizing it's noon. If folks have to go, then then we're done with the tutorial. Jenny's just got a word or two to say um, at the end here. And yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the class.
Thank you, Dana. That was absolutely wonderful. It was good to see some familiar names and faces again. Uh, so yeah, this is just our final slide. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Again, my name is Jenny and Dana was our instructor today. So our emails are listed right there. Um, feel free to follow us and Dana on social media. And one more time, this great deal from our friends at I Like Crochet. It's ilikecrochet.com slash virtual24 to get 90% off the retail price of that magazine subscription. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for our future your classes. Um, Dana will be back uh, moderating some of those and maybe even teaching some. So thank you again for joining us and hopefully we will see you guys soon. All right. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.